Shalom everyone. Uh, finally, uh, we're able to make a channel here in YouTube and this will be my first uh, video presentation here. Uh, this video presentation is inspired by a certain uh, YouTube channel and the way I will describe their presentation, I can use seven description descriptions rather and first I would say their presentations are well researched, well documented, um, well presented and it's a work of highly intellectual individuals working together and then so with that qualities of their video presentations I would say my fifth description for their presentations is it's strong and firm and with that it's so hard to twist the presentations or the thing that in their presentations uh, it's so hard to twist and hard to trample down and lastly it's only father yes wisdom that can detect discern the defects of their presentations i will not say that all of their presentations are there are defects actually some of them i am blessed by their video presentations there are just some that i see something that is not properly aligned with what is the word of via is trying to say and since the scope or my mission or the thing that I'm looking forward in creating this channel is these four things. First, I'll try to share here uh, scripture truth. Next is about the, I'll try to share here what I've learned about Hebrew language. And another thing is I'm going to share with you here too my personal inspirational testimony. And lastly, I'll try to share here too some kosher food uh, that can you can try for Shabbat preparation. And uh, the thing that I'll try to look for with the recipes that I'm going to share with you, it would be nutritious, delicious, and uh, not so expensive food. And uh, it's be, it would be, what's this, another thing, it would be uh, time saving and money saving. So I, I include time because we're here in United States and there were times when our days, the hours of our days is quite too short, especially during the winter. So I guess it's nice to have some, some recipes that uh, time saving, should, should I say. Okay, so that's my, the scope. Or the thing that I'm looking forward to share here in this channel and then so since I've seen something in the presentation that I've, I've seen it's not properly aligned with what the word of father yeah is trying to say to us so I need to to uh, unveil it with yes help okay so as I already said some of the presentations helped me or blessed me uh, but there are things that I don't agree with them and so here is one of the presentation that I don't agree with them because as I already said it's not properly aligned with what the scripture or the word of Father is trying to say. Uh, they believe that uh, King Solomon or supposedly Shilomo uh, is a black man and um, they use the book of Song of Songs in uh, chapter 1, verse 5 statement that King Shilomo or Solomon is a black man. What is crucial with this belief is they are trying to uh, make a teaching that since King Shilomo is black man, thus all the Israelites are also black. And so they are trying to claim that the people in Africa and so within the Philippines too because they are brown skin are the true Israelite and the Jewish people now living in the land of Israel are 
fake Israelite and DR Europeans. Okay, so let's try to check. Uh, let's try to check if it's true using this uh, book Song of Songs by King Shilomo. If it's true that King Shilomo is a black man. Okay, let's check it out. Now, before I gonna start, I want to remind you that, that though that book is written by King Shilomo, it does not follow that he is alone speaking there. I want to remind you that there are three speakers in that book. First, King Shilomo himself. Second, is the Shulamite woman. And third is the friends. Greater chance these friends are, are the friends of Shulamite woman. And they are the daughters of Jerusalem. And you can find that in chapter 5 verse 8 of that book. Okay. And then the proof that there's a Shulamite woman there. You can find that in chapter 6 of the same book verse 13 okay now so we can finally and we can we can thoroughly understand who are the speakers who who made declaration that i am black we need to look at it uh starting from chapter 1 verse 2 if you can see my visual aid that i provided here i hope it's clear for you but in case it's not then just please try to get your scripture and read it so you can see it clearly okay so let's go first to chapter one if you can see it there verse two why i started with verse two it's because of the statement there that let him kiss me so the speaker there said that let him kiss me so the him there, it pertains, of course, to a man. So the speaker there is not the one who should kiss, but it's the man, okay? And then on verse, um, I hope you can see it, verse 4, okay, we will know that it says there, uh, the sovereign, if you can see it, there's a sovereign there, okay, the sovereign. Uh, let me see. The sovereign. Oh, I'm sorry. Brought me. Okay. The sovereign brought me into his inner room, I guess, if I remember it well. So we can see with that statement that the one, the speaker here, is want a kiss from a sovereign. And with that, we can say that since King Sholomo is a king, then he is the one that the speaker here is talking of. So. The speaker in chapter 1 of this book could not be King Shalomo. Why? Because the speaker here talks about him. Okay, I hope that's clear. And then another thing. The speaker here on verse 5 made a statement that I am black. Since he's talking about the sovereign and made a statement that I am black, then we can make a conclusion that it is not King Sholomo who made the statement that I am black. Okay, that's another thing that we should bear in mind. It's not King Sholomo who made the statement I am black. Okay, let's go farther. Anyway, since there are another two speakers there still, the friends and the sh uh, Sholomite woman, there might be tendency that the one who made that statement is are the friends so let's just make that speaker there and in chapter one as unknown okay we do not know yet who the speaker in the chapter then we will move to chapter 4 verse 8 here we will know that uh, there's a different speaker why because of the statement uh, Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. Okay. So, the first speaker is talking to a man. Now, because 
in chapter 4 verse 8 because it's talking to a woman, it's a bride, so greater chance is a man now. So this is another speaker in chapter 4. Actually, it starts with verse 1 of chapter 4 that we can notice that the speaker here is the different speaker of in in chapter 1. Okay, then we'll move to uh, verse 1 of chapter 5. There we can also find that Okay, so there in chapter uh, 5, I guess it starts with, uh, no, okay, verse 1. Verse 1, it says, I have come to my garden, my sister, my bride. So it follows that in chapter 1, still the speaker from verse 1 of chapter 4 down to chapter verse 8 of chapter 4 up to verse 1 of chapter 5 is the same speaker. The speaker still uh, talking about his bride. So he's a man and talking about his bride. Okay. But we will notice that in verse 2 of chapter 5, there's a different speaker here. Why? Because it says, I was sleeping, but my heart was awake. And then it follows, he knocks. So somebody outside the room knocks. And we can clearly see that Outside the door, the one knocking is a man because the speaker said he knocks. And then there's a comma and a semicolon, or a quote. And then that man outside made a statement and said, Open, um, let me say, the one who knocks says, Open my sister. Open for me. Open. Open for me, my sister, and my love. Okay. So the, man, the man outside the room asked the one inside the room to open the door, to open for him. And he, he calls the one inside the room as his sister. And so now we can clearly see that the one outside the room is a man and the one inside the room is a woman because... Uh, she is a sister. Okay, so I hope it's now clear for you. And then we will move now to, as we go on, if you continue reading, if you have your scripture there, if you go on reading with that, then you will find out that when that woman inside the door opened the door, she found out that the man outside the door is gone, or her lover, should we say, is gone. So it ended up, she, she looked for him, she ended up going to the city, and the watchman found her and brought her. You can see that in verse 7 of the same chapter. And then on verse 8, we can find that she talked to her friends, the daughter of, of Jerusalem, and put them under an oath that if they can find her lover, that they should let him know that she is faint for love or for his love. And then, so on verse 9 of the same chapter, uh, we will know that it's the, the, what's this, the friends who made the reply. So since the, so, so since they are put under an oath, they ask the woman what kind of beloved, uh, uh let me, it is, what kind of beloved is your beloved, oh, beautiful among women? So the friend asked her, what kind of beloved is her beloved, oh, beautiful among women? So now it's very, very clear that she is a woman and they are asking her to describe her lover. And the what's this? The thing that I guess I do not know why why they don't see it. Maybe it's not revealed to them. But in reply to that question, the the woman describes love her lover in in verse ten of the same chapter by saying that, uh -huh. Let's see, my beloved is dazzling. 
and ruddy. Okay. She replied, my beloved is dazzling and ruddy. Okay. So to verify things, we need to check that in an interlinear uh, scripture, it means there's a Hebrew scripture there, Hebrew word there, and check that out, what's the Hebrew word for this? And we uh, we got chak, and chak we adom. My basic learning of Hebrew make me understand that the we there is a conjunction, and, and adom is the Hebrew word for the color red. And as we check in the translation, translations rather, we found that it is white and ruddy. Okay, if in case you don't understand what is a ruddy, that is a type of a skin that's a healthy red. So with that, I would say that King Shilomo is not a black man. He is white and reddish. Okay, opposite to everyone's claim that he is a black man. Uh, this is not to despise, with, uh, disrespect my the black people, because I had, I have a lot of brothers and sisters who are black men, and I owe gratitude with them. I remember when. I was diagnosed with two more. Uh, a, sis, a black sister of mine came here, though her husband's day off is just on Friday and supposedly being in this belief of ours, which I might share in this channel too one of these days. Uh, she should be uh, doing that, doing Shabbat preparations on Friday, but she spent that Friday. Oh, uh, I remember the teaching of a brother from Ilya.com yesterday at Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat broadcast. It's not Friday, it's the sixth day of the week. And I will explain that too in, in the next videos that I will do. So, on the sixth day of the week, that sister of mine, black sister of mine, will come to our house to help me with a lot of things and she will sacrifice uh, doing Shabbat preparation, but instead she will spend her Shabbat preparation helping me here. And even up to this time, I have a lot of black sisters there in Dallas. And they still keep praying for me because I have this impaired vision. And so I, I had a lot of black sisters and brothers who are so kind. And so with that, I would say that it is not the color of our skin that will define us, but it is the color of our heart. And I can't uh, also say that white people with pointed nose are, are that bad people. Uh, I I do understand too the the one who created the channel that they try to what's this? to give a lot of description that Europeans people, white people, pointed nose people are not good, they were oppressors, they were evil, and, and all sorts of bad description for them. But I guess what I can see is we can't be dogmatic. Uh, we can generalize everything. Uh, I do agree with some of the statements, like the European people come here, the, the true owner of of America is actually the native, the Red Indians, and then it, the European people came here, and then would uh, take advantage with the kindness of the Red Indian people, eat their turkeys, after that take their lands, kill some of them, and then uh, start declaring war with England, and and then uh, what's this? Uh, declare independence from England. So, to uh, the people now living here in United States are, are 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 Europeans. But in fairness to those people too, uh, I guess we can only say that they're bad, they're oppressors, or, or whatsoever. If 
my sisters and brothers in faith are not your sisters and brothers in faith. And if my husband is not your husband. In fairness of also with that one who created the channel, I know that Filipinos, uh, what's this, really went through great oppressions by the Spaniards. And so I can't blame them if they have hatred with Europeans. But in uh, to be fair with the Europeans of today that are so kind for me, I need to speak for them too. It might be that you did not be able to live here in the United States, that you did not be able to experience their kindness. Uh, even not to my sisters in faith and brothers in faith. One time, I still remember where we are in the store. And then I had a great coughing because it's very, very cold. And all of a sudden, a white man whom I do not know, just offer me a water. He get me a water and give it to me. And I feel like, oh, they're still kind white people, though I'm a brown-skinned Filipina. So we can't be dogmatic with them. And also, in fairness to my white or, say, European sisters and brothers, I can't forget their kindness. I remember just four days after I gave birth, to our firstborn son, four days, and I'm breastfeeding him, and a sister of mine, should we say, she, she's an American with pointed nose with white skin, so let's say she's a European, she get my son to their home, breastfeed him, and in fairness to her, she had seven children. So adding my little one to the house is really quite hassle for her, but she really takes good care of my little one. So in fairness for the white people, and another, I, I, I don't, I can't, I can, I can share all of them because there's a lot, lot of them that were so kind, and there's really European. In, in fact, she is a Polish, and uh, she spent a lot of her time helping us, because at the time, I can't really do a lot of uh, how household works, because I feel busy most of the time, and so she spent most of her time with us, and she even make a GoFundMe to, my, to our Facebook account so, to help us financially, so she's that generous and that kind, she's not perfect, but she's really that helpful, that generous, and that so, so kind woman. And she is a European. Another woman that I remember, a white woman that is so kind. There's also a sister of mine who would wake up early in the morning on her day off. Uh, she's working as Dakers worker. And then she will come here to help us. And though there's not, it ended up not good with us. At the end, when we let, uh, we let them stay here with us, but there's really a lot of times that she she also she's also so generous with us and so helpful to us. And the, another sister, a white sister, I can also remember when I finally landed at the hospital to have surgery with my huge brain tumor. And there's a white sister of mine who really came there in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, she spent it with us to share what, what our struggles and trials at the time. So in fairness for that European woman. And there are also another white woman that here. Uh, she's also a sister in faith that she's really uh, looks like um, a mother or a grandmother to us. So in fairness, there are white women and black women who are kind. So we can't say that it's just the, the black or we can't define goodness or kindness by the color of the skin. And another thing, I do believe that uh, I, I know at this time now, there are a lot of people who wants to claim they are the true Israelite, they are the true Hebrews, and they are the true people of our Creator. And I guess I will use this comparison. Like say, for example, there are two people who will come to me 
and claim that uh, one will claim that she is the true teacher and the other one is fake and the other one would also say I am the true teacher and the other one is fake because that's the scenario now of the situation. The, the black people would claim that they are the true Israelite and the people there in the land of Israel are the fake Israelite and if we go to the side of the Israelite people there, the Jewish people there in the land of Israel now, for sure, for certain, they would also say we are the true Jewish people, Israelite people, that side, that other one is a fake. Then I guess I will, I will test it this way with these four measurements. The first thing is if you were, you want to claim that you are Abraham's seed, I will use Galatians 3 verse 29 that says, If you belong to Yahushua or the Messiah, then you are Abraham's seed. So I will check it out. I will use this measurement. Are you in Messiah? Do you repent and accept? Do you repent your sin? And do you accept the Messiah? That's the first thing that I will use as measurement. I, I, I need to use some identification. So I, so I will be able to identify if you your claim is true. Next, the word of Father has said that he's going to give the Shabbat, the seventh day, as a sign for him and his people. So if you're going to claim, claim that you are his people, then I need to see that you are a Shabbat keeper. Next, through the Israelite, our Creator gave the Torah or the way of life to the Israelite through Moshe. So if you are going to claim that you are a true Israelite, then you should be a Torah keeper. If you are not, then I don't think I have all the reason to believe in you. Last, if you are going to claim that you are Hebrew, then it follows then that you know the Hebrew language because you claim you are. Okay. But if you are going to claim you are the true Hebrew and you can even say the correct name of your ancestor, and that is Eber and not Hebrew, then there's something not right. There's something to be questioned. But I would like to remind everyone that uh, the children's song says, this, the line of the children's song says, red, brown, yellow, black, and white, we are precious in his sight. So it's not about the color of our skin. It is about repentance of our sin and accepting the Messiah that will make us his people. I hope I make point here. And since there are still a lot of things that I've seen that I need to align in what is Father Shias trying to say uh, in same channel, then please subscribe this channel and wait for my next video Shalom, everyone.